What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about the future of the Fall franchise, I guess we can call it now, from Lionsgate. And we'll be talking about Maxine briefly. We'll be talking about Halloween, specifically Halloween Kills and a scrapped flashback we never got. And then I'll round it out by basically doing a Cliff Notes version of what I had to say on my thoughts regarding Terrify 4 from yesterday or last night's video, I should say. So just to start it off, uh, this is coming from Bloody Disgusting. The Hollywood Reporter reported this week that Capstone Studios has given the green light to not one, but two sequels to fall. Now, we did hear about a sequel to fall being in development earlier this year, but now we have some more context to it. Fall director Scott Mann returning to produce the sequels. Additionally, Mann will co-write and direct the third installment. But first, Fall 2 is set to begin shooting in June of 2024. The Hollywood Reporter notes Fall 2 and Fall 3 will bring back original characters from the first film while also leaving room for new ones to be introduced. These two new sequels are wonderful opportunities to expand on the original. We want to now take the franchise even further as we assemble the very best team and ideas to ensure the next hair-raising, death-defying, and pulse-pounding film to global audiences. Now, this came from Capstone's Christian Mercury. Now, naturally, one has to wonder what situation will unfold in the sky during these sequels because I don't expect them to be using towers again going off of this comment here and how will returning characters be factored in mason gooding i mean he 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 bit the dust very early on in the film and we know virginia matt matt not virginia madsen what's her name <laughs> i can't remember her name but the the blonde she ended up dying we had, had like a 47 meters down twist for her but all in good time, I guess we'll see how they'll end up factoring in. You can obviously do like newspaper clippings of them. You can do flashbacks. You can do dream sequences. I can't even see why the girl who survived would come back. I just don't see what would draw them back in. As far as what I'm thinking of so far, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on how or why any of them should be coming back, especially if it's going to be a completely new scenario. Why show up and say, hey, I went through something like this if they were to go that path? I'm not saying they are. I hope they don't. <laughs> But you guys let me know, did you enjoy Fall? Why or why not? Let me know down below. Jumping into Maxine. So the Maxine tea for today might be stuff a few of you have already seen me mention on Twitter. But for those who are not aware of this, this is for you. Maxine, we know, still doesn't have a release date, unfortunately. We still do not have a trailer. Uh, but I honestly wouldn't be shocked if this film ended up debuting at the South by Southwest event before getting its theatrical release at a later point. Anyway... Kevin Bacon, we know, was reported as starring as a private investigator earlier this year, and I'm going to shed light on that a little further here. So Kevin is like a thorn in Max's side during this film. But is he the killer? We'll find out. Now, those of you who saw my plot reveal video, you know what the answer is to that. But those of you who don't, you'll find out. Kevin's character also knows about that sex tape from X and threatens to expose Max throughout the film. He's basically just harassing her the entire movie. He has a few other secrets that are revealed as the film progresses, but whether or not he'll be like a Billy Loomis in the film or not, you'll have to wait and see. Also, one of the more graphic moments in this film apparently involves someone's nuts being ripped off. Just going off of memory because I don't have my notes in front of me right now, but nuts being harmed was what stood out to me. Someone's nuts are in grave danger during Maxine. Uh, now, I want to touch on the Halloween subject really quick before I dive off into discussing Terrifier 4. So Slash Film recently revealed this interesting detail about Halloween Kills from this new book, Halloween, the official making of Halloween, Halloween, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends which reveals that the second movie in the trilogy was originally going to contain several flash flashbacks to the infamous night Michael Myers first came home in 1978. It was reportedly screenwriter Scott Team's idea for parts of the movie to be set in 1978. He, along with fellow writers David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, considered casting a fresh face to play a younger Laurie Strode, as well as potentially using old footage to place a young Curtis face over another actor's. Ultimately, Green, who also directed the movie, decided against the idea. Teams recalled Green saying to him, I love a lot of this, but I'm realizing that there is unresolved stuff from the first movie and the second movie needs to be a continuation of the night. Now, my thoughts on that are simply this. I'm glad we did not see that. I feel as though that would have just been very crowded in, in respect to the fact that one, you already have all of these legacy characters that you've wasted 
with the ones that were brought back and really didn't serve much of a purpose other than just add to the body count. Uh, then you had, then you would have had flashbacks of a young Lori. For what reason, I don't know. But maybe that's ex maybe that's examined further in this book that this came from. But then on top of all of that, Michael and Lori, they don't even interact in the film itself. So I guess to see their interactions in the form of flashbacks could have been a little bit underwhelming. First of all, they wouldn't have even interacted if they were flashbacks. Because for one, she didn't... They would have just been making stuff up as to what happened after the attack in 78. So I don't even know what they would have shown with Lori. Because I'm, I'm imagining that the flashbacks themselves wouldn't even had Michael and Lori interacting. So what would have been the whole point of those flashbacks? Whatever, I guess we would have just dived deeper into Lori's trauma and how that night affected her. But I don't see really why that would have been necessary especially with the face swapping like there's a lot of things i think they were going to do like the f one time they were going to reshoot the ending of 78 i'm glad they didn't do that i'm glad they didn't include these flashbacks it just seems really unnecessary to me and i'm glad it did not occur okay just going to give my thoughts on terrifier 4 or the comments that damien leone made about terrifier 4 when asked by screen rant recently if terrifier 4 would be the end of the series he said that's to be determined he also went on to express that he doesn't want the franchise to kind of fall into the traps of having too many timelines like we know halloween has he doesn't want to have those same mistakes granted he admits that he loves those 10th entries in these ongoing franchises he's got to again be referring to the movies like nightmare on elm street friday the 13th not that nightmare on elm street has 10 movies but friday the 13th your halloween's you know all those franchises that keep going on chucky even he doesn't want to fall into these traps where because of the commercial success, your vision is constantly being ruined. You have an end in mind and he did express that he has an end in mind and he would like to see that play out as he has envisioned. And I respect that from him and I hope he does get to do that. Do you guys think the Terrifier 4 should be the end of Art the Clown or do you have other things you would like to see? And while again, there are other things that many of us would like to see from a lot of IPs, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are necessary. I think that Damien Leone has a has a very good understanding of the fact that a story is very important, character arcs are very important because he highlights all of these things in his comments with this uh interview he had with screen rent which to me just makes me respect him a lot more as a filmmaker in the horror genre okay so the actual last thing i'll be talking about here today is going to be welcome to dairy because we got an unexpected update here today so welcome to dairy we know was supposed to come halloween of 2024 i, I well i actually don't want to say we knew that but it was confirmed today with the knowledge of the fact that it now it's shifted from halloween 2024 so hbo and max chairman ceo casey bloys has revealed these revised scheduled plans for upcoming shows that have altered due to the ongoing strike. She revealed this during a press event in New York today. Welcome to Derry. We had that scheduled for Halloween of 2024, she says, but now that's likely 2025. Now, as for Welcome to Derry and the plot details, those are still being kept under wraps. The official description for the series stays set in the world of Stephen King's It universe. Welcome to Derry is based on King's It novel and expands the vision established by filmmaker Andy Muschietti in the feature films It and It Chapter 2. We know that the cast so far includes Taylor Page, Giovanna Depo, Chris Chalk, James Ramar, Madeline Stowe, and Steven Ryder. Also, uh, Bill Skarsgård. We don't know exactly if he is back 100% just yet because he hasn't been officially announced to be involved, but I expect him to be back. But that is the last update I want to touch on here today. Welcome to Dairy. It's now slated to debut in 2025 due to the ongoing strike. What do you guys think about all of this? Down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification. Name is a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.